prosumer espresso machines cost between two and six thousand dollars, but they all share one thing in common. They brew excellent coffee. Let me show you the signs of professional grade extraction. At the start, coffee emerges evenly. It should occupy 80% of the screen within one second. Next, the remaining area should fill quickly. There should be no spurting, which indicates channeling. Small bubbles of CO2 will stream out if the coffee was roasted recently. In the cup, you should find the mousse to be smooth and dense with very fine texture, just like this. Now that is some beautiful coffee. I made it with the espresso machine I got for Christmas. Profitech, ECM, La Marzocco, Dalla Corte. <laughs> yeah, not, uh, not exactly. Oh my God. It's like a miracle. Now this is some wired gourmet style kit. There is a bit of a learning curve, but once you get the hang of it, you'll find that it's impossible to get a better shot of espresso out of any machine, even one that costs 10 or 20 times as much. This costs less than $400, tax and delivery included. So if my little gadget can make technically flawless espresso, what are we paying for with those prosumer machines that cost in the thousands? Well, a stainless steel cabinet, two boilers, lots of plumbing with valves and relays and pressure regulators and copper tubing for moving hot water and steam about, an E61 group made from a massive chunk of chrome-plated brass that reaches operating temperature in a mere 30 to 45 minutes, and a water pump that can really help you wake up at 6 in the morning. And to afford all that luxury, one might be tempted to scrimp on their grinder, which can then add its own harmonies to our six o'clock revelry. The best part of waking up, no doubt. The one thing we don't get is better coffee. Most of this hardware is devoted to heating, storing, and delivering hot water and steam. So essentially, we're paying thousands of dollars for steamed milk, which I can show you how to duplicate with a $30 French press. Seriously, and I'll do that in a future video. Of course, there is a competent espresso maker attached to it, but I've already got one of those. Let me show you how the robot works. We get a 58 millimeter basket, which is a standard diameter, but this one is very deep because it doubles as the brewing chamber. Tamping is a bit of an issue. You can't grip the tamp the way you're used to. I use my thumbs, give the basket a quarter turn, and repeat. That works well enough. When you're ready to brew, you lay the shower screen directly on the puck, then fill the basket with hot water. There are paper filters that you can place between the puck and the shower screen to help distribute the water. I haven't noticed any advantage in terms of flow, but the layer of paper helps keep the screen tidy, so I like it. I use AeroPress filters because they're cheap and available everywhere. Fold them thus and cut them to fit. It takes only a few seconds and they can be reused several times. You only need to rinse them. If you find the tamp too awkward, you can easily make it self-leveling. A roll of scotch tape is all you need. Scrape or sand the inner ring so that it fits tightly on the handle. Drill holes in the plastic so that it can't create a vacuum when you withdraw it. Peel tape from the roll until it fits nicely in the basket. It might be ugly, but it's dirt cheap and it works flawlessly. I tested it by pressing down clumsily with the palm of my hand, relying entirely on the hack, and the shot was fine. Some robot owners worry that the water isn't hot enough. I haven't had a problem. The heavy port of filter would be a major heat sink, but the basket makes contact only here at the top. The piston is heavy too, but it never touches the water. There's always a layer of air between them. I find that pouring boiling water straight from the kettle onto the screen works without any preheating. Dry coffee absorbs heat from the brewing water. The bigger the dose, the hotter the water has to be to ensure the right brew temperature. Conversely, smaller doses require lower water temperatures. The acceptable temperature range for brewing water is between 86 and 94 degrees Celsius, with small doses at the lower end and large ones at the higher end, obviously. 
just boiled water in the robot basket will fall to around 90 degrees Celsius in my experience, which is fine. Preheating the portafilter and the piston will gain you a few extra degrees if you feel the need. Now, this double spout attachment is massive at 180 grams, so it absolutely needs to be preheated. But of course, it has no effect on brewing temperature. I've got one complaint. Mine did not fit snugly and it kept falling off, so I put a layer of PTFE tape in the channel under the O-ring and now it fits fine. To remove it, just push with your thumb. You can buy a robot fitted with a pressure gauge if you're worried about being consistent. But with a fully manual machine, I think it's obvious when a shot is running even a little bit out of spec. You can see it and you can feel it. I don't miss having a gauge, but I know that some of you will want to document your pressures, so you have that option. There's also a pressurized basket available if you need to use pre-ground coffee. Let's brew! First, the classic single shot is impossible due to the shape of this basket. You can add between 50 and 100 milliliters of boiling water. The more water you use, the less the temperature will fall. You can experiment a bit and fine-tune the water volume to match your dose if you want. First, I'll pre-infuse using gentle force on the levers until the coffee appears. Then I ramp up to what I think is 6 or 7 bar, hold for 20 seconds, and then ramp down to around 4 bar toward the end. I get around 28 milliliters of espresso in about 30 seconds for a 14 gram double and 35 seconds for a 21 gram triple. There's one issue that's constant. Once you start, you must not stop pressing because the silicone O-ring makes a very effective seal between the piston and the basket wall. If the piston moves up even a short distance, you'll get a partial vacuum that will unseat the pup. You can certainly slow down, quite a lot in fact, but you mustn't stop. I'm sure you could see that this shot is technically flawless and now the mousse proves it. Once it settles, we're left with a generous layer of very fine bubbles. The coffee's texture is syrupy and the flavors are intense. This is as good as any shot from any machine. Once you reach this point, you would dial it in as you would any coffee until it tastes exactly the way you think it should. You can get creative with the robot and you might enjoy doing so. I've tried it with low pressure and a long contact time and I like the result. Here I'm making a double using what I believe to be around 4 bar of pressure for a 60 second extraction. The result is, yeah, it's espresso. I think the flavor here might be slightly improved, a bit more complex, but I haven't done this enough times to rule out a placebo effect. In any case, I'd encourage you to try a few low and slow shots. The robot gives you the flexibility, so why not take advantage of it? Now, let me recap the ways the robot is superior to a prosumer dream machine. Easy profiling with tactile feedback. It's flexible. Absolutely silent operation. There's no warm-up delay. You can start making coffee as soon as your kettle boils. There's no E61 group to sit there all day, radiating heat, consuming electricity, trying to burn you. There's no scale buildup, so no descaling routine. No back flushing. You don't need a drip tray. It has a very small footprint. There are no expensive rebuilds. There's only one silicone O-ring that you might replace occasionally. It's a fraction of the cost of prosumer machines that cannot actually make better coffee, which represents a saving that might enable you to spend more on an excellent grinder. Now let me recap the ways the robot is inferior. The basket cannot handle single shots. You can only divide a double or a triple. The brewing water temperature hovers around 90 degrees Celsius in the middle of the normal range. It hasn't got a milk steamer. The workflow is such that you can't foam your milk while pulling a shot. And that's everything I can think of. All right, well, we're done for today. My next video will cover the advanced mocha pot tips and tricks that I've been promising to share. I'm going to have plenty more to say about espresso in future videos, so keep in touch. Cheers!